what's going on youtube it's forever is a while welcome back to my channel today i'm going to show you guys how i make this super easy super delicious oreo cake so you guys want to make sure that you're staying tuned for the entire video also please 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 don't forget to subscribe to this channel also leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you guys thought about this cake and look at this cake guys this is delicious trust me this cake is good <laughs> so without further ado we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the video Okay guys, for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and add two boxes of Betty Cracker cake mix. You guys can choose to make the cake from scratch if you like. That is completely optional. Um, I just like this wedge. It's a lot easier and more beginner friendly um, because it does require less ingredients. And if someone does not know how to make a cake from scratch, this is just the easiest way to do it. Um, so basically, if you guys are using this method, you want to go ahead and substitute a few of the ingredients. So if your cake mix says add water, you want to add milk instead. If it says add three eggs, you want to go ahead and add four eggs. And if it says add vegetable oil, you want to go ahead and add butter instead. And then you want to go ahead and add a pack of pudding. Now since I am making a yellow cake, I am going to go ahead and use a pack of vanilla pudding. And then once I mix that all together, I'm going to go ahead and just take some crushed Oreos to go ahead and add that to my batter and just mix it all up. Okay, and since I am making a marble cake, I did go ahead and make a box of chocolate cake. And basically, what I'm just going to go ahead and do is add the chocolate cake on top of the vanilla cake. And then I'm just going to go ahead and mix it together like so. Okay, so this is how the cake should look once they're blended together. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and place the cakes in the oven. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my wet baking strips and I'm going to go ahead and wrap them around each of my cakes. If you guys don't know what a baking strip is, they are strips that you wrap around your cake pans to help your cakes retain moisture and also to keep the cakes from rising so high in the center. If you guys don't have baking strips, please go ahead and watch my banana pudding cake video where I do show you guys how to make at home baking strips. Okay, so while the cakes are in the oven, I'm just going to go ahead and make the buttercream. I am using two sticks of softened butter. Mines are unsalted. And I'm just going to go ahead and mix that in the mixer for about three to five minutes. And once that's mixed up, I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of vegetable shortening to the butter. Okay, this is how it should look once you've mixed the mayo and the shortening together. Oh, not the mayo, the butter <laughs> and the shortening together. You want it to look like mayo, but you're not going to actually mix mayo. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and add eight cups of confectioner sugar. What I'm going to do is add four cups first, blend that together, and then add the other four cups after that because I feel like it just makes it a lot more smoother that way. Now I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, then I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, and then I'm also going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of milk. I'm using 2% milk, but you can use um, any milk of your choice. Okay, and in case you guys are wondering, I am making the whipped buttercream, which is the reason why I did add the heavy whipping cream. Um, for me personally, I just think it tastes a lot better that way. It gives it more of a silky, smooth texture. And also, it is the closest thing to um, tasting like whipped cream without actually having whipped cream, as you can see. Um, honestly, guys, this is really, really good. So, But this is also optional. If you guys don't have heavy whipping cream or don't want to use heavy whipping cream, that's fine. You can just add four tablespoons of milk. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and crush some Oreos up. I'm just going to go ahead and put these Oreos in my spice grinder. Um, if you guys don't have a spice grinder or a blender, you guys can just crunch up the Oreos the old-fashioned way. I'm just using a spice grinder um, because I have one. <laughs> no other reason. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add the um, Oreo crumbs into my buttercream and mix it all up. 
okay and as you guys can tell my cakes are done baking out of the oven so the first thing i'm going to do after they chill is i'm going to go ahead and level my cakes um yes my cakes are already flat however i just always level them just to make them super flat i guess i don't know <laughs> and as you guys can see you can see those chunks of oreos in this cake oh my god guys this cake is delicious <laughs> So before I put my cake on my cake board, I'm just going to go ahead and put some buttercream on my cake board just to help the cake to stick to the board. So, you know, just to make sure it doesn't slide at all. And then at this point, it is going to be a little repetitive. I'm just going to go ahead and level each cake. I'm just going to go ahead and frost each layer and then stack the cakes. Okay, guys, and I just want to say that me making this four layer Happy cake. Birthday. Sorry, this is not a birthday cake. My daughter must have been in a video. Okay, okay. So I was just gonna say that me making this four layer cake is just completely optional. Sorry, hush, hush. Um, if you guys wanted to make like a three layer cake, you would just need two boxes of cake mix. And if you guys were looking just to make um, a two layer cake, you would just need to use one box of cake mix. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so this is just going to be my crumb coat. Basically, I'm just going to go ahead and cover, I'm sorry, and cover the entire cake. Now, what this is, this is a tape knife. You can use whatever you have. I just use a tape knife. You can also use a bench scraper or a cake scraper. Um, basically, you just need something really sharp to get your edges um, really sharp and nice and even. So, um, basically, what I'm just doing is I'm just evening out the cake as um, evenly as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the gaps on the cake. As you can see, I'm just filling in the gaps to make the cake as even as possible. And I'm just going to go and go ahead and go over it about three or four times. And then once I'm done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in a freezer. And after I take it out the freezer, I'm just going to go ahead and um, cover the cake for the second layer. And okay guys, this is how the cake looks um, once it's came out the freezer for 20 minutes and then once I've actually put the second layer of frosting on the cake. So as you notice, the cake did, does get noticeably darker because once you keep you know, putting coats on the cake and smoothing it out, it does get darker from the Oreos. Um, so what I'm doing um, to get my cakes really, really um, nice and smooth, I like to take a Viva brand paper towel. I don't think you'll be able to use any other brand than a Viva brand. This is the only brand I use to do this method. Um, so you want to take a Viva brand paper towel. You want to go ahead and just lay it on the cake and smooth it out. Um, I'm using a fondant smoother. If you don't have a fondant smoother, you can definitely use your hands or anything that can get the cake um, you know, just a little bit more smoother. And this is actually how it looks. As you guys can see, it does get the cake really really smooth i'm um, doing this method so i definitely recommend this method now i'm just gonna go ahead and do my chocolate drips on the side of the cake um for some reason it did not record i'm not sure why but in order to make your this is this order this <laughs> this is chocolate ganache in order to make your chocolate ganache um what i used was one and one third cups of chocolate chips and i used one cup of heavy whipping cream the same heavy whipping cream that i used to make uh, my buttercream so basically what i do is i'll pour one and one third um chocolate chips into a bowl and then i'll pour one cup of heavy whipping cream onto my chocolate now you do want your heavy whipping cream to either be um heated on the stove or in a microwave i just heat mine on the stove for about three to five minutes and i'll pour it over the chocolate and I'll stir it up and then I'll let it sit in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes because it does have to thicken. And basically I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Just take my, um, what is this thing called? I don't know, this little squeeze bottle. <laughs> this is a squeeze bottle um, where you could cut the end off a piping bag or um, a sandwich bag, whatever you have. I'm just going to go ahead and take this and make some like cute little drip designs around the cake. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and take my piping bag and I'm just going to go ahead and pipe a few uh, rosettes on top of the cake. So sorry you guys, my arm was covering the camera while I was recording this. 
Um, basically, I just made another batch of buttercream. I didn't want to put any oils in it because I wanted this just to be a white buttercream. Um, so for this, I just used, because I didn't need a lot of buttercream, I just used one um, stick of softened butter, a half a cup of shortening, and then I just used uh, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then I used um, one and a half uh, tablespoons of whipping cream, and one and a half tablespoons of milk, just in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to go ahead and decorate the cake with these Oreos. I do have some crushed Oreos, and then I do have some Oreos that I did um, cut in half. So what I'm going to do is take those half-cut Oreos, and I'm just going to place them on top of those rosette designs on the cake. And then I'm going to take those crushed Oreos and just sprinkle them um, everywhere on the cake. Now, these do not have to be um, crushed as much as the Oreos did, the, ones, the Oreos that we put inside our buttercream, because we're just actually just sprinkling this on top of the cake. We don't need to spread those around the cake. So just feel free to, you know, put them in a the bag. Or what I did was I just put them in a the bag, and I just took a metal spoon, and I just uh, crushed them that way. I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle them all around the cake. <laughs> Okay guys, now this is the finished cake. As always, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this video. Also, if you have not, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And guys, let me know what you thought about this cake in the comment section below. If you guys did make this cake, please let me know how it turned out for you guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>